Welcome to JSA TV, where we are covering the latest stories, trends, and innovations around the entire digital infrastructure ecosystem. We are here at ITW 2025, International Telecoms Week in National Harbor, Maryland, and there's a lot of buzz and excitement here. And I am thrilled to have right by my side, Mike Wynn, CEO of Inflect. Welcome. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure. It's yeah. a pleasure. How yeah. has the event been for you so far? Uh, you know, like most ITWs and big events like this, it's a uh, it's been a madhouse. But uh, we're at the tail end of it, and you know, here we are. We survived it. We've got some good stuff coming out of it. Success. Yeah, success. That's all you want. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Great. 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 Uh, you know, for anyone, uh, any of our viewers that maybe have not met you before, maybe mm -hmm. you can give us a little bit of background about Inflect. Sure, sure. Uh, Inflect is a, a marketplace and advisory for data center, network, uh, uh, cloud services. So we're building an AWS, or I'm sorry, an, an Amazon.com marketplace for the industry, coupled with a high-level advisory. So you can get research and buy everything from bare metal servers to co-location to network services, DIA, et cetera, et cetera, with a quick click of a finger, and you can get expert advice through our advisory. That's exciting. Yeah, it's and well changing the way. Yeah, changing the way we go to market in the industry. Very good. Very yeah. good. Well, I know today we wanted to talk a little about AI, so shall we dig in? Oh, yes. Okay, great. Well, obviously AI, the biggest conversation topic here in the entire event, yeah. but I'd like to know your thoughts around um, how companies are using it to sell and maybe the trends that you're seeing around AI, yeah. selling, et cetera. I think in, in this particular uh, conference, a lot of it is us servicing the AI companies, mm -hmm. right? So I'm seeing the green shoots of... Um, our fellow travelers here, the service providers, utilizing AI to get some insights on how to better market, maybe build some uh, chat agents, things along those lines. But for the most part, we here are servicing the AI companies with large scale data center footprints, uh, fiber all over the world, that sort of a thing, right? Mm -hmm. So it's interesting hearing people's perspectives on how they're going to service the industry. For the ironic part of it, the internet infrastructure space, mm -hmm. While we service all of these next generation technologies, we're kind of the last ones to to actually adopt them. In Flex, we've built our own agents, so I think we might be maybe leading the way a little bit. But being able to solve issues like you know, I don't know what I actually need. I might know what I want, but I have a set of business needs. Can you help me through it? And AI is amazing for helping have a conversation with people and guiding them to the right place. And I think that's that's one of the parts of the the industry that's been very opaque. Um, and I hope more and more people accept, uh, adopt AI as a way to engage customers. But we're still very early days. I think you're right, early days. And you're right, different adoption for different niches. But yeah. I'd love to hear Inflex role in what way you guys are using Yeah, AI. We, we are fortunate by the virtue of our business, being a marketplace, we have a vast amount of data around all the different providers we work with, as well as the use cases on behalf of the customers who are buying services right. all the way from smaller enterprises to mid-market to Fortune 500 to the Neo Cloud players, hyperscalers, uh, autonomous car companies, all of that uh, feeds into our understanding of what people are trying to solve for. Mm -hmm. And the AI, Winston, our chat uh, agent, uh, helps solve problems. So instead of the typical way that I think that buyers have felt around our industry where they're being sold something, mm -hmm. it's more, can we solve a problem? And that, that's always been a very successful way uh, for us at least in terms of helping market services to somebody. So that's, that's a, AI is really interesting from that perspective because it gives you that comfort, that expert advice. It's, you know, ours is always on, always learning. So right. hopefully it becomes more of an Uber version of a sales engineer or solutions architects and maybe even, you know, a concierge for folks uh, over the course of time. That's that's the way we view it, is giving value to people and doing it as soon as they expect it. It's the ultimate resource. Yeah, yeah, You're exactly, providing. exactly, yeah. yeah. Absolutely, that's terrific. Okay, you okay. and I were speaking before we got on camera about the fact that you are essentially a digital nomad. You are a ah, global yeah. traveler and yep. well-versed there. And so, interesting question that I'd love to ask you, and that is, you know, given this global economy, uh, what are you seeing around the tariffs that are coming in for the United States and maybe how it's uh, 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 impacting your organization and your yeah. ecosystem, really? It, it, it's, it's interesting for us, is, again, because we represent so many providers globally, we, we have a lot of um, ability to shift focus depending on the demand. In general, the tariffs, um, and even before the tariffs came out, we were traveling in, uh, in Asia right after PTC. Uh -huh. 
And it was very interesting to see the leanings of uh, companies in a lot of these countries that normally would not, you, you would not associate with leaning towards, say, China. Now, the, the, a lot of this tariffs is targeted at China, for instance. Right, right. But you're seeing the leaning towards China because we're like, well, you know, we do business with them. We being in America, we hear a lot of, you know, why China is uh, ultra competitive with us, maybe some negative press around it. But what we found is that, it, you know, they're, they're just another global player. And that's the way a lot of the world views them. So the questions I got when I was traveling around is, well, what's America going to do? Mm -hmm. uh, we hear about tariffs may be coming. Right. Are you going to be reliable as a trade partner? And that was, unfortunately, the canary in the coal mine for me, right. that something was afoot, right? So, unfortunately, when, when um, uh, the travels ended uh, about a month and a half ago, tariffs were announced. The biggest impact is uncertainty. And in a market where you're doing things like making billion-dollar bets, you're buying billions of dollars with the GPUs, and you want to house them in a data center on a 10- to 15-year contract, the impact of tariffs hitting the GPUs as they may enter the country or whatever creates tremendous uncertainty. So we've seen a lot of CEOs, a lot of folks just go, you know, let me wait and see. But from the international world, when people are viewing America, it's even if we fix the tariff issue, fix it, quote unquote, how are people going to feel comfortable that we won't change them again? Right. So it's the uncertainty that is actually the killer here. Even if things... All the tariffs go away tomorrow. People will still wonder if they can come back. Well, that's fascinating. I mean, at the end of the day, I think what you're saying is this is very much a connected economy, and we need yeah. to look at that lens, that's not right. just myopically in the United States. That's right. And I think from a business perspective, we, we all want certainty. You know, you're, A lot of these companies are public companies. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to forecast revenue and costs and profitability. And, you know, if you're forced to make just wild changes or at, at least anticipate them, I mean, we're talking in, in very tight time scales. We're not talking about tariffs are coming in six quarters, so prepare for it. It's like literally like tomorrow. Right. I mean, we, we have people with equipment coming overseas. There's, there's you know, there are uh, cargo ships sitting outside the port of L.A. right now with billions of dollars worth of equipment that will not land. Because if you land, when you ship them at a certain dollar for dollar uh, uh, price point, they're going to land, and all of a sudden you're going to owe 25, 30, 40, 150 percent more. That's challenging for a business. We could have an entire uh, ITW focused <laughs> we, on yeah, we can. economy. Yeah. Oh my goodness, yeah. it's a big topic, and yeah. you're right. We're just beginning to uh, understand implications, aren't we? Yeah. 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 Well, thank you. I appreciate you bringing that up. It's an interesting conversation. It is. It is really yeah. is. Thank you. Well, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for being on JSA TV. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, and to our viewers, thank you for joining us today. Uh, to all of you, I would say stay curious, stay connected, and happy networking. And that's a wrap. Thank you.